First, I'd like to thank everyone for showing up today. Uh, it's obviously very important to all of you, and it's uh, equally important uh, for us to uh, discuss uh, what's going on here at the uh, Crestwind HOA. Um, my name is Glenn Myers. I'm general manager for Crestwind Petrie City. Uh, I'd like to go through some introductions before we get into the bulk of the meeting. Um, there's our agenda, introductions, president's report, financial report, lifestyle report, developer comments, and closing comments. You all received and uh, thank you for sending in some of the questions and topics that we're going to discuss today. Um, we, if we didn't get, if we don't list, list or discuss uh, specifically your topic, uh, we'll be in touch with you individually, uh, both myself and Tony's team. So if you bear with us with the comments, we'll make sure that this doesn't last for an eternity. <laughs> All right. First, let's do our introductions. Uh, we have Tony Adams. President of the HOA. We have Andrew Hitch, Vice President of the HOA, and Adam Turner, Treasurer for the HOA. If you notice, currently the only members of the board are um, members of the culture team. That's because we're right now under the um, declarant control. And what that means is once the um, developer starts to transition out of the uh, community, we're going to be bringing on members of the, re the uh, uh, residents to uh, take control of the board, and you'll be the ones making the decisions. However, right now, uh, they make the decisions, and uh, it's very typical of a uh, new community, and uh, it's just basically the way it's always been done, and we'll do, continue to do so. But however, we are getting close to uh, appointing members, we're going to be soliciting volunteers who would like to be participate and be a member of the board. And until uh, the transition is complete, it'll be more of a uh, advisory role that you play. I'd like to introduce the first service residential team. As I said, my name is Glenn Myers, I'm general manager. Uh, I'd like to point out Paula, you all probably know Paula if you have any interactions here. I'm very pleased to announce that Paula now has some initials next to her name, CAM, it's a licensed uh, title. She's now a, a licensed community association manager like myself and Gary in the back. So uh, I'd like to applaud her. Knowledge and strength, and uh, Paul has been anxious to turn around and absorb everything and anything knowledge-wise related to community association management. So, good for you, Paul. Uh, next is Nicole Jerobin. She has a fantastic job really in entertainment and setting, entertainment and setting up uh, our uh, evenings, uh, our concert events, and so on. Um, couldn't do it without her. Paul is a very big help to her, so we couldn't do it with either, without either of them. And finally, uh, Stan, we'll leave it at Stan. <laughs> He's our maintenance um, director, and uh, he does a heck of a job for us. There isn't much that he can't handle on this end. Uh, introduction to guests, I already pointed out Tony Adams. Um, in the back running the video for us is Gary Hewlin. He's the uh, general manager for the Lake Lanier property. And we appreciate him stepping up and loaning us his camera from Lake Lanier so that we can videotape this and put it on our website so anyone that could not make today's meeting will be able to view it in its entirety. Next, I'd like to uh, introduce Richard, where's Richard? I'm high, right here. There you are, you're sitting down low, I couldn't see you. Richard from NT Scapes. Did any of your partners make it? I'm in the office, but I'm here. Richard, you've probably seen him around quite a bit. He's uh, 
responsible for the uh, making the uh, long uh, landscape crews that you see around. And uh, if we have any questions, we'll, he'll be here and available to address those. Corey and uh, Kyle cannot make it. At this time, I'd like to turn it over to Tony Adams for the President's Report. So we have a question, if the price to build the clubhouse and the surrounding grounds are 
Coulter loan to the homeowners to be resolved when Coulter leaves? When will the loan be forgiven by Coulter? If not, what is the total value of the loan? Well, so we didn't build the club and then charge it to you guys. With each sale of every lot, you guys paid a prorated share of the club itself. So I estimated that the club would take $10 million to build. That number is built into the price that you paid for each of your homes. We currently run what's called deficit funding. So anything, now that the club is open, and it runs through its, it, you run in expenses, you are generating some expenses because sales have been good. So 340 houses are adding to uh, the overall uh, balance sheet. And then we, as the developer, we fund the rest. So if you needed to generate $600,000 this year, but you only generated 400, we would pick up the remaining balance of 200. And what that has to do with is operations of the club, operations of all common areas, pine straw, flowers, uh, chemicals, everything. Um, but, but we're not, we didn't sell you a house and then also then you now have to buy the club. We're only deficit funding your shortfall that you don't currently generate while we're here. But the club, you guys individually pay for based on your pro rata share of what home you purchased. It's built into the lot and the house price. Uh, when and where will the community garden be? Will everyone be insured a space or how can it be guaranteed plot? So what we've done at other facilities is we put a garden in and we're working on that uh, for, it won't be in phase four. I'm trying to get it closer to here. Uh, we may have to take a lot to do it. My overall thought process is to be close to the parking lot that's on our side. Um, but there will not be a space for everybody. We, we just can't build that many spaces. What we've seen over time is, and what happens in linear is you sign up on a list on the garden club, and then the available spaces rotate per year. Um, but you don't, I mean, the gardens aren't huge. It's not like you know, some of you grow up on a farm and you just had as much space as you could do and you just put gardens wherever. And these are a little bit more refined and, and uh, so as we get closer we set them up, you, depending on how people want to garden it, and we've had a few ask for it, but I would tell you that most people in this room, not all of you are going to put garden on the ground. So I think there'll be plenty of space for everybody. Uh, current cable internet service in Crestwood, why was the infrastructure for Crestwood and Peachtree City not laid out for modern cable and internet service with Comcast service established using the HOA uh, potential for the 650 customers <coughs> negotiated with service costs. Uh, uh, we attempted to do so. So typically we would include cable services as part of your HOA dues. Um, for whatever reason, either AT&T or Comcast, we could not get them to a manageable number. In other words, it wasn't, the Delta wasn't sufficient enough to say, Okay, great, we can include your HOA, but you only get a marginal number for it. Um, they, they just weren't aggressive at the time. I don't know if it was the business manager we were dealing with. I don't know what the issue was. Some of it had to do with the fact that McDuff had not been built yet, and we were building that, so they felt the line of service was going to be very expensive to run. The truth is, they ran it anyway, yep. and they're here anyway. They're, both of them are here, so you have AT&T and you have Comcast. Um, some of the questions have come into us and why we don't have more control over them. I liken it to the fact that Coulter is a pretty good sized organization, but if you've ever dealt with a multi conglomerate company such as Comcast or AT&T, they do what they want when they want to do it. And we don't pay for the service. So I have control over gas and I have control over power because I actually pay for the service to install to get to your home. I don't pay for any of AT&T services. I don't pay for any of Comcast services. So when they decide that to install, that's entirely up to them. We have no leverage whatsoever. We have engaged the city to help, but the city doesn't have much leverage either. They can do what they want to do when they want to do it. The biggest issue is that they're blowing fiber through everything, and because fiber is so expensive to repair, they want to wait until more houses are on the ground. So every phase, it wasn't just phase three, we dealt with it in phase two, and we dealt with it in phase one, because we were out here with nothing else out here. So.
So that's typically what happens in development, though. Anything else for me? Sounds good. Thank you. All right, let's get down to the nitty gritty, which everyone's probably interested in is the uh, financials. May put somebody to sleep, may keep our, others very interested. But our, our accountant, um, Deb Ellis, is a CPA. She works closely with Lake Lanier, and she provided the numbers from our financials, and she tried to simplify it somewhat so that uh, it, we didn't have 30 pages or 30 slides that you folks would have to sit through. So this is what we have. Uh, you can see on the top line, our income for last year was uh, $905,000. Um, breaking, breaking out, as you can see, it's 589 for from the uh, dues that you folks all pay. And Coulter pays, uh, as Tony had mentioned, deficit funding of $316,000 last year. Our expenses were uh, $971,000, and that was uh, broken out, as you can see, through administration, homeowners, uh, clubhouse area, and courts, entry uh, and common area, and uh, reserve contributions, which equates out to about a net loss of $66,000. And discussing with, with my accountant, uh, thinking that'd be a red flag, she said that's within margins. So. Uh, um, we, where there's no reason to be in a panic. Uh, as you can see, uh, the balance sheet shows that the capital reserves are $115,000 and the culture advance is $476,000. Is that a question? I couldn't hear it, I can't tell if this is where it was coming from. Anyway, uh, so we're looking at uh, 2019 in comparison to 2018, and you can see that uh, the income uh, and advance total is uh, this, this year, 1,255,000 as opposed to 905,000 in previous years. Um, that's based on the fact that we've got more homes that have been built and more contr contributions from the residents. Uh, our expenses, um, they're a little elevated uh, with more, more doors. We obviously have more expensive. Administration, slightly higher. Homeowners, clubhouse area and courts. Uh, entry common and uh, reserve contribution is down uh, from the previous year, uh, but we're hoping to work our way back up. And the reason it was down is we didn't want to run the risk of having to increase uh, the assessment to our owners. So we depleted uh, or, or we pulled it from our, our reserves in our estimation for the 2019 budget. Capital reserves, as you can see, are 156 and 156,000 in 2019, as opposed to 115,000 in 2018. Special reserves. Uh, 9,000, that stayed flat, and our culture advance increased from uh, 476 to $776,000. Yes, sir? Question, what, what uh, do the homeowner's expenses and tax? Uh, what do they pay? Yeah, they pay the capital reserves and the capital advance. Your monthly dues, where do they go? Expenses related directly to your home, lawn, irrigation, maintenance, relish, pickup, security, and cable. Uh, cable. Gary, uh, is that cable included in the linear? Yeah. Uh, you can't really stay there. No trash. Yeah. Uh, my, my fault for not informing Jed. That was not included. We'll make a correction and we will post it or send it to you in an email once you reviews our, our numbers. But following uh, in 2018, we had over 200 and, uh, 
or 102 rather tones, annually I equate it out to uh, 181,558 divided by 102, 1,780. Uh, remaining expenses for uh, administration, clubhouse, courts, entry, common area. Annually we work for 747 times 4, equates out to 1,780 divided by the 4, 128, 1,280. So our monthly that would be monthly as opposed to uh, quarterly, as we all know we pay here quarterly. And that's it. That is. Uh, right now, I'd like to introduce uh, Nicole to discuss the lifestyles activity that she's worked, she and Sue Ball have worked so hard on. So <coughs> to wear this because I feel like J-Lo. <laughs> okay, so um, I think we had a pretty fun first year. Yeah. Um, thank you all you know, for coming to the concerts and just participating and buying tickets and trying out our first Camp Crestwind and all those fun things that we did. So if you didn't show up, it just would not be very fun. So thank you. Um, yeah. Did you know that we won the award for 2018 Community of the Year for 55 plus housing? We had 24 concerts last year between the indoor and the outdoor ones. You all started 14 new clubs. Uh, we had two vendor fairs, which were really wonderful. We got really lucky. They were just beautiful uh, inside and out and uh, had a lot of, well, we'll talk about numbers in a minute. Um, and then Camp Crestwind, our first one, was wonderful. We had, I think, six or seven lunch and learns. And then we also started having what we're calling Food for Thought, which is the evening presentation, similar style. Um, Full calendar. We have a new website just as of a month or two ago, Crestman PTC HOA, that Paula worked really hard on, and you can now purchase tickets to our concerts online. Yeah. Oh, I know. No <laughs> you can still write checks, but you know, it's an option. Um, okay. Next. We're up to 17 fitness and dance classes offered each week. Five of them are free thanks to our talented and qualified homeowners who lead yoga and qigong and art and such, so thank you to them. Your TGIF gatherings are hopping, I understand. <laughs> Our concerts last year, the 24 concerts, brought in $33,000 in revenue. Our expenses for those concerts was $31,000. So we had a little profit. Uh, so yes, the first vendor fair, which was called a health and hobbies fair, we had about 200 attendees. And at the October one, the um, home and hobbies fair, we had 300 people through the door. At our first Camp Crestwind, we had 50 kiddos, and we had 300 people at the holiday party back in December. So again, we have the 14 clubs have been started by you, um, following the rules and regulations that we provide. Uh, we've tried to rearrange the club spaces here that we have and make sure that we can accommodate more than a couple clubs at a time for those meetings. And we've purchased extra card tables because y'all love some cards. And um, we'll continue to you know, support the clubs as they grow and, and try and provide the, the extras that you need to have successful meetings. 
a look ahead. So this, if you, um, I should mention, because this is, most of these um, upcoming events are in the Whipper Will, and I didn't include the um, quarterly magazine in the presentation, but <clears throat> we've had this, I think, pretty cool quarterly magazine, thanks to um, the publisher of Peachtree City Magazine. We have um, a famous dog on the back. <laughs> we have a pretty wonderful golf cart map that really focuses on our section of Peachtree City. Um, and we'll start, you know, increasing the content to this as well. So what we have our first outdoor concert in May, um, and our next health and hobbies fair the next day. So we're going to do a back-to-back -back concert in the evening, and then the vendor fair the next morning. And then our outdoor concert in June, and a comedy show in June. And last slide, thanks. And then our Camp Crestwind will be July 27th. Dean Z. <laughs> um, outdoors, full band. Tickets not available yet. <laughs> and then our last outdoor concert of the year will be in October. Um, so again, I think that's it. Uh, thank you so much for participating. Uh, closing remarks um, that I'd like to address for some other questions that came in uh, that I'd like to give explanation for. Uh, one of them, uh, one of the concerns are, were related to uh, gym and pool rules. Um, we will be posting gym and pool rules. Um, one of the comments in, in the question was sparked by the fact that there were minors or something like that in the uh, gym area after hours. Um, you know what? We can't be here all the time, but if you know something isn't right, speak up. I mean, uh, someone can get hurt in that instance, and uh, if uh, you need to ask where their chaperone is or who they're with and do they actually live here, it's within your right. This is your facility, so please help us out. We can do what we can. We can post signs, but Kids are going to disregard signs or don't even read them. So, like I said, um, we will do what we can. Signs will be a start, but um, we need some supervision if the kids aren't being supervised by their own guardians or parents. Um, we're also, uh, the question was asked, can we post signs about gym etiquette as far as wiping down equipment after it's used? We will work on getting those signs. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm going to try and consolidate some of the signs. We don't want it to be uh, nothing but because it becomes a blur and you don't see the important information that we're trying to address, but uh, we, we heard you when we're going to address that. Um, pool gates. Someone made a comment that they had seen people actually depart from our parking lot and leave the community. Uh, we're, we're in the process right now of uh, securing the gates uh, electronically, so the same passes that you'll use to enter the building will also activate the gates for the pool area, and uh, that should help limit. I caution you though, uh, if you don't know the person and they for claim that they forgot their pass, I know it seems like you're not being nice, but you really shouldn't let them in because you don't know if they are residents and they're using the facilities that you folks are all contributing to. So uh, I would ask you to use a little discretion once we do have the, uh, the gates um, secured. Parking, curb parking. Uh, this is a touchy situation. Paul and I have been doing a lot of research where this is concerned. And unfortunately, because the streets are not private, correct, Tony? We cannot restrict people from parking in the street overnight. 
I looked at Peachtree City's uh, ordinances, and uh, likewise, they said they're public streets, and they have nothing, they, they say nothing about restricting or not allowing overnight parking or curb parking. So, uh, unfortunately, we're going to have to grin and bear it, but all of you folks as residents might want to be mindful that it's not, it's not one of our, our it's not being neighborly if you, if you have to do it, but on occasion, there's nothing that we can do or the police can do for that matter. So, um, try to be respectful of your, your neighbors. Um, thanks, Keith. Where's Richard? Stand up, Richard. Had a question about rolling and aeration, and what is the T-scapes um, policy on that, and will there be any done, so on. Uh, rolling and aeration of, of the properties. Uh, I think it's something that we offer, uh, according to what I've been told. Uh, once the homeowners have moved in, it's, uh, it's an added expense if you want aeration. Uh, if you want us to come back and re-roll something after the fact, if it needs to be done to begin with, we'll take care of it. Uh, but if you've been living there, for a year and something needs rolling, something needs smoothing out. Call me, I'll be glad to come by and take a look at it. We'll, we'll come up with a solution and figure it out together. Thank you. <coughs> and uh, one final note, and this is very important to hear and hear to everyone's heart, I'm sure. We had a couple of incidents recently with uh, 911 police as our fire and rescue, stating that they can't took them too long, took them longer than usual to get here because they couldn't find us. Where's Paul? Paula has done some uh, investigation and she'd like to give you an update at this point in time. <laughs> this does make you feel like Jay Lowe. <laughs> Okay. Um, anyway, I had called, first I called Fayetteville uh, to see what they had, and they told me, well, Peachtree City is its own city. So I called Peachtree City, talked with Kathy, with uh, planning, zoning, GIS, and what she's going to do. And she promised she would get back with me um, via email and a phone call. She's going to go through um, to make sure that 911 has everything that they need um, because it's already been planted and everything. So the, she's going to double check that they have everything they, they need. She also is going to check with the chief fire department, uh, the chief at the fire department to make sure that they know um, where we are, what the streets are and everything like that. So she's working on that talk with her yesterday and she's going to get back with me um, by the end of this week. So. Um, Carefully, hopefully, we're going to get that settled because she said, you know, this is important.